And this, all of six miles away, what did they do then in the evening? Keith Debenham again. But we used to be fished up all sorts, sorts of mischief. They know we used to go to a little farm up at the man with pa name of Parker. We go over the hedge to get these apples and eat. He happened to see us, will he? Come along there. <laughs> He's got nearly up to us. He get, I got you, I got you, get, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, before he could get us, you know, we were down at the bottom and we went over the hedge. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Play pots and hounds at night, we did. Used to have a, used to have a bugle. You know, and there'd be two hours, two yeah. hours go off, and then the rest would, you know, come and find where we used to run old people's gardens and currant bushes and everything. If you had a chance, you'd, you'd have a little game of dominoes or anything, you know, or pack the cars, but not lots, play you. Just do a little game of whist, these four of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, till our time was up to get up to start work again and that's a <laughs> tell a yarn or two and so much she knew what I knew or something like that. Well, we had to make our own amusements, played with each other and that lot. Used to run up the haystacks and all that sort of thing. Hide up and make a hole we had one, one straw stack. Father used to laugh and used to tumble it right through. I can remember one one evening we sort of got a bit mischievous, you know, so they sent for the, the policeman to come. But we happened to see, we happened to see them coming. They didn't have very bright lights on the boys then, they used to be sort of more or less oil lamps, you know. When we seen them come, we started to, started to run. Because we run and they run down there after us, you know, because when we got down to here, down there, there's some chestnut trees there, and whoa. Well, we jumped over this wall. Well, I was a little bit timid. I, I jumped over and I laid inside the wall. And the other boys, they went down and down the middle. Well, I remember old Sergeant Hooks got saying, Go on, Kenzie. He said, Go on. He said, You can get him down there. Because Kenzie come over the wall, and there was luck in heaven. He put his foot right over me. <laughs> and went down the middle. And I was still lie there uh, when they when he come back, but uh, I, I I couldn't catch it. <laughs> but I, I well remember that. I, I thought so my his foot come right on me, I thought. <laughs> well on Sundays, what then? A church perhaps meant more to the village in those days. But still you had to behave yourself even then. Look at frog. <laughs> Mother used to get her umbrella and give us a poke. Well, you had to sit still. You didn't have to like they do nowadays. That our outings at our Sunday school, we used to have tea in the rectory and then all the games we used to have, you see, on the lawn. And a scramble for air for sweets and that like. The um, ones that are very energetic, of course, they got a lot more sweets than the ones that were slow. <laughs> oh, it was awfully good. I can remember that so well. Then, in, in the later years, uh, our Sunday school treats, we used to have Mr. Whitten's wagon, and we took the train from Mellor Station to Yarmouth. They were told what time we should get back again uh, to Mellor Station and the wagon and horses were there to meet us again. All tired, home, but very happy. <laughs> One, they were wonderful times. I can remember them so well. Bob Cully was the carpenter on the Redgrave estate for many years and in that time he was in charge of maintenance and any new work that needed doing on farms or the estate houses. The squire was the local landowner, and so Bob was employed by him. He used to get Bob onto various jobs outside the estate as well. Well, you know, the older steps were stonework, and the little squire didn't like to see the stonework show up. So he got me a case that was old woman. And then I remember Sam Bob, didn't I? And uh, Reverend Stevens, he went and put my name on that. Uh, 
I knew I'd done the work for nothing, but I didn't want him to do it, really. Rosie Flatman's husband was the sextant, and going with this job was the little cottage next door to the church. He did all the normal sort of weekly chores round the church, but sometimes he was called on to do more out-of-the-way things. Here, Rosie's telling us about the squire's family vault and the time they had to go down into it. My husband was a heavy man, and this Reverend Batty was a heavy man. And one Sunday morning, he says, Oh, Sam, he said, we should have a suit of that. As one slab kept, you know, flipping his <laughs> So he says, one of the others, we shall go through there one of these times. <laughs> so what they did, they took out these other slabs, and Mr. Sherman put the broom down. Oh, my word, he said, there's a big hole there. And then there was a big stone slab, so he rolled it on a roller right back, and there was a beautiful staircase. We went down this stairs, <laughs> a bit weird, you know. We had torches, and I think I went and got a hair and lamp before I went there, because I, <laughs> it's a bit foul, you know, when you first go, isn't it? He went along this little passage, one after the other, and we let the men go first. <laughs> It's under the vestry. Oh, it was weird, that's oh, weird. Because <laughs> they were all falling bits, you know, little bits outside shelves. And the underneath was the leading shelf. And there's studs on these outside shelves as clean as my brasses on, on little bits you see that anywhere. I got a bit of brass, shine like that. And the wood had fallen away, you could see the ledge see through. And there was little boxes there, we didn't know what they were, we thought probably might be their treasures or it might be children. But they weren't shapes of coffins, they were just sort of square boxes. So what do you think they would be? That was a bit weird, I didn't try to <laughs> stop long, but anyway, that was most interesting. While we lived there the 28 years, we both no, two squires. The last squire, we were living up in the village. Rosie Flatman telling us about her husband's job as sextant at the church. Everyone's a millionaire On the sunny side down every street Down every street with Flanagan and Allen. Bob Cully and his wife remember the little squire's funeral from the 1920s. Bob was one of the few who walked with the wagon right from the other end of the estate to Redgrave Church. We, we met in Hillhouse and we walked downstairs and put one of the farm lands before all this, these horses. We walked right round and through one bit round by Broom Hills and we come through last down and into the whole gates and across the park and that way at the church. There's a boy which was with me in Buxton. He converted a sort of stage affair in the rain for the carton to stand on. Ledge girl, an elm carton and another oak one over the top. Very heavy that was. That was heavy, I remember that. Oh, you had a dark suit on and that was covered with dust. Covered with, uh, uh, that was a short, lot like short one at Rouge, you see. This is what it is. So uh, we walked all the way beside it, and the squire and his brother Tony walked behind. They were the only two that walked all that way. The other tents and then went out the hall. But the men weren't the only ones who went out to work. Reenie Edwards tells us about the women who wanted to earn a bit extra to stretch the housekeeping. I used to go stone pick them to mend the roads up, and they used to use the stones to, to make the roads uh, good, you see, for about five shillings a, hun a, a load. Great big stones like that. And then they had the steamroller come and, uh, and flatten them down, you see, grind them into the ground. And then they used to come and tar them then and put sand on them. And we had to have the the gate put up higher because they wouldn't go over the stones, you see. That was just a flint, ordinary flint road when I didn't first remember. I used to, the whole farm used to cart the stones for the council, you see. They used to roll them down with a big, heavy 
heavy rolls and they, and they might put a little sand on top just to keep the stones together boys if it was in there you had cushion tires what they call cushion tires you know hard solid tires I once had a cushion tired bicycle for safety because we were always getting punctures and it was hard to drive though I had to cycle with them one how long ago is it since the road started I can't remember 1924 I think and the children used to run down to look at the engine going you know they had great lumps of granite I can't nearly as big as a little apple and then after a bit they uh, had it like powder nearly ground it up in little flints little tiny bits right now they were regular street they used to be about a dozen uh, young chaps, you know, were saving in, in the same 18, 19, 20. And we used to be down on the knoll there. And, and these young chaps all had racing bikes. They used to start away from the knoll and bike round to Tedford and Barry. Well, before they got down to the bank office, you couldn't see them for dust. <laughs> <laughs> and then the women, too. Uh, they used to go and, and pick acorns, you know, in those days. The farmers would buy them. That was the oak trees, you see. There were so many then to what there are now. Not so many trees now because a lot of them been cut down and a lot of them were old and fallen. Wind blew them down. If they got quite a lot of them, the farmer would go with their um, tumbrel and uh, and put them in the tumbrel for them. He used to make quite a bit of them, you know, for the feed for the pigs. And uh, and I think some of them were ground up for, f for food for the um, um, bullocks and that like. They used to go gleaning for the chickens, you know, and oh, used to get such a lot. And I I don't remember this but I have been told that what they gleaned if they got quite a lot they used to take it down to the mill down at, uh, that would be before Mr. Pettit's time, Mr. Whitten and they used to have it ground and made into flour and uh, they had that for the winter time You see when they go um, a Harwin uh, beet. They used to hold the beet and then uh, we used to go behind them and single them out. You see now n these days they they hoe them and they, uh, they single them out at the same time you see but we used to go behind the man and single them out. So in those days even the housewives used to go out and they were expected to bring home a little bit of extra cash. My well, sister went down the whole farm one day after the money, you know, a week's money, she went, she got as far as the wood. There's a big black dog started to follow her all the way along the wood, and when she got down the wood, that disappeared in the wood. But, uh, cause I couldn't bend anything. Mm -hmm. She used to tell us a tale about her father. He was a real old drunkard. He used to work on rope of fame cutting the turf. I used to call him the Fame King and uh, he used to get drunk and he used to walk to this on a, you know, on a Saturday he used to walk to this on a Saturday and uh, he said coming home one night he said when he got to the church he saw something coming a light across the, across the meadows and he said, when, before I got up, he opened the gate. There was double gates there. He opened the gate for it to come through. And he said, when I got up to the church or the gate, he said, it just looked like, you know, when the, there were three horses in the carriage and they got new heads on, but that's all blaze. He had a, he had a little dog and they used to call it Trimmer. And he said he never knew it to be afraid of anything. And he said he thought he'd take it for what he used to come up along the top road, you know, past the school, and then go up the Dool's Walk 
and taken home for that way. And he said that that got showed his leg and it wouldn't move. He said and, and, and kept there. He said there's he said there's some come walk to show to him. And uh, he said I got a three cocked hat. They were so tall and he, uh, he said that little he said he picked a little dog up and that was that was trembling. And he said he hadn't seen anything like it before. And uh, he said when he got to do a walk style to go up the footpath that went through into the shrubbery, whatever it was. And he said he didn't go that way anymore. Those hair-raising stories of Redgrave from Keith Debenham.